Okay, something I think takes a little bit of maturity to, to learn and understand over the years is that just because you don't like something doesn't mean it's bad. It could just not be for you. Like, Baby Shark, not my favorite song, but I'm not gonna go say Baby Shark is a bad song because to a lot of toddlers, it's amazing. Anyway, this is the Mercedes EQS SUV 580. This is a large luxury SUV. There are a lot of things that I do like about it, but a surprising amount of things that I really don't like. I'm not gonna say they're bad, they're just not for me. And I think I've realized uh, for my week and a half of testing and driving this vehicle, this isn't for me. And I actually kind of want to test a couple others, maybe sort of along the same lines, BMW iX, things in the same price range. But this does a couple things really well. And I'll show you those things, but I'll also show you some things that I absolutely do not like at all. It's really interesting. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, as you can probably tell by the name, this is the SUV version of the EQS sedan, which I've actually already checked out. I did a video on it on the main channel. Here's the key, by the way. I'm just gonna go ahead and lock that up real quick. Uh, and it looks okay. I kind of think it just looks in this white like a big egg, <laughs> like a real big egg. It's pretty big, long wheelbase. It's got this sort of like an off-white paint going on with this one, but it is quite a bit taller than the SUV. And there is an optional third row if you want. This one doesn't have the third row. It's just two rows and it's very comfortable. The basics are, the basics are, wait for the plane to pass by. Uh, no, the basics are, this has about 530 horsepower and it's got a 108 kilowatt hour battery. It will do about 260 miles of range. The 580 is the higher performance version that has more power, more straight line acceleration, but a bit less range. There's also a, a version with a bit less power and a bit more range but that's the essentials and it does fast charge. So that's good to see. It starts at about $130,000. So for that price, it better be amazing at all the things you might be thinking. And I agree, but I'll clarify. This one is really good with luxury and comfort. I mean, that's what this just hands down is incredible at. But as someone like me, who is a little more into sportiness or tech features and things like that, this ain't it. It just is a different type of vehicle. So you'll see what I mean in a second. I'll get into some of the, those features, but also I wanna show you around the outside a little bit. So uh, this right here is the electric cap. You saw how that just popped open mechanically? Inside the car, I can't close it from the screen. It's very odd. It'll tell me that it's open and it'll give me a button to open it, but it won't let me close it. So I have to close it manually. Thought that was kind of weird. These door handles are pretty sweet. They do go flush with the vehicle if you lock it, which is pretty cool. Uh, here's your EQS badge. This gigantic hood does not open. Only the manufacturer or the dealerships can open these. Uh, so they don't open at all. No front trunk, which you might be wondering, okay, it's a pretty big vehicle, no front trunk. I've seen that before. But then it's kind of funny. What is this over here? This is... Uh, if I unlock it, it's actually a windshield wiper fill up. So this is where you put your windshield wiper fluid. You can't open the front to do that. So you do it by pouring it right in here. I think that's hilarious. Uh, but that's another weird quirk. Little door sills here to get in. And these these doors are, are actually really nice, thick and insulated. And they got a nice heavy thunk. Just listen. I don't know, that's hard to get through video, but the, the thunk of the door is really nice. Uh, and let me show you the rear storage. Since we don't have any front storage, you come back here and yes, the only way to open is by pushing in the Mercedes logo. Kind of interesting, but that's a pretty good amount of storage right there. It is high off the ground. Since there's no third row, you do have a lot of space here. And there is a little bit of a sub trunk as well, if you're into that so you can fit some small items, your charger and things that you might keep down there more regularly. And then that's a big flat opening for groceries and all the typical stuff you'll throw back there. Anyway, okay, let's get inside. So I'm gonna unlock this here, this pops out. A lot of effort to open that door. But then we get in and right off the bat, you've probably seen a Mercedes interior EQS before, but this is the one with the hyper screen. Meaning if I hit that button here, it's gonna fire up a huge display here, another one over here, and back here. Now, Mercedes 
will say that this is one huge 60 inch screen. It's not, it's actually just a bunch of separate displays behind one huge flat sheet of glass. So this is all flat here. One flat sheet of glass is cool, but that's a dashboard screen. That's the main screen. You can clearly see the bezel there. And then that's the passenger screen. So um, I wanna make sure I say all the things that I like that are nice about this before I get to the things I don't like. Um, really the highlight though of both the front seat and the back seat here is gonna be comfort. Uh, in the front seat, you've got these awesome seats. You've got the massaging. It is a really good acoustic isolation in here. Very, very quiet while driving and just sitting here. This one's also got a lot of the nice trims and wet carbon fiber over here and nice metal switches. It's got the sunroof that you can slide to open and close. Just by sliding there, this thing starts to open. Slide that closed. That's nice. There's Alcantara, there's leather. It's sweet. And let me show you the back seat because a vehicle this big, you do expect to have quite a nice, luxurious back seat experience, and it absolutely does. At least in this two row configuration that I can speak for, if you're behind a six through driving position, that is plenty of room here. I can kick out and be comfortable. You do have a screen for your HVAC controls and you can actually point them with real physical controls, which is cool. Um, these are some of the softest headrests you'll ever see or feel in a car. The speaker system, oh, I should mention, the speakers in this car are awesome. Very reminiscent to me of the Mybox speakers. If you've heard this, what is it, Burmeister sound system? The speakers are everywhere through this thing. Great listening experience, I love it. I'm also getting the second half of the sunroof back here. It's nice, okay? It's luxury. Okay, look at, the, look at the size of this, this folding down, this thick armrest here, which has got a wireless charger. It's got more storage inside here. I don't know what I would put in there, but you can put stuff in there. You can close this whole heavy thing up. It's clear things are built very, very well, which you'd expect for 130 grand. And so I'm happy to report you've got it. But now I need to get to some of the things that aren't bad necessarily, but I just know aren't for me. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Some of these things uh, actually are bad, but some of them are, are not uh, something I would look for in a car. So let's just start right here with the steering wheel, right? So this is actually a really physically nice steering wheel. These kind of look like capacitive buttons, but they're actually, they click when you hit them and then you can mess around through the swiping in a little bit. I still don't love having to swipe on this tiny surface, but you can mess around with the dashboard and get a G-force meter if you're into that, which is cool. A lot of buttons here, that's all right, but nice nice switches, really firm, clicky things. The rear windshield wiper, all that works great. Um, and also super, super light steering, which is ideal in a luxury car. This car also happens to have, which is standard with EQS, 10 degrees of rear wheel steering. So you're turning around in a parking lot or any maneuverability at low speeds. This is a really tight turning radius, which is cool. Oh, by the way, heated seat also heats the steering wheel because there's no actual heated steering wheel button. But anyway, uh, this is kind of where the, the fun ends and a lot of the like chaos begins. So you get to the middle section of this car and there's some storage in here and pop that open, some storage, some USB ports, cool. But these buttons down here are kind of in an odd spot because number one, when you're driving, holding the wheel like this, often, you kind of like just put your elbow or your arm on some of these by accident. I've accidentally hit this hazards button more than once now and just found that I was driving with my hazards on because I hit it with my elbow. Uh, you have to start stop, which is also not my favorite, but it's there. And there's a fingerprint reader for logging in. Um, I'm not gonna configure that right now because it's not my car, but you log into a profile. And then you get into this hyper screen chaos out here and i've heard mixed reviews about this some people seem to kind of like it and i think there's a difference i believe i said this with the sedan there's a difference between capability and intuitiveness this system is so capable there's a thousand different features you can enable from the maps and navigation to android auto or apple carplay to all of the interior lighting and the responsiveness when you hit the accelerator pedal, the lights change. There are speaker settings. There are internal like speaker sounds for when driving the car, but look at how deep you have to dig into the settings 
just to change the sound that the car makes on the outside. And I think the sounds cool and everything, and it has that ability, and there are a million different things you can do, as you can see in the settings, but getting to do those things is a lot of digging through menus and, and not a pretty UI. <laughs> so getting to the car settings, you have to hit home here. It's kind of got this like snow winter wonderland type of UI, I guess for right now, but all of your climate controls are also all on screen. So if you want to change stuff here, you have to do that by hitting a touch screen. This is going to get really glossy and fingerprinty over time. Not a huge fan of adjusting all of that stuff here. Mercedes could have easily put like some nice switches right here down here for just like climate control, fan speed, heated seats, heated steering wheel. That could have been here. So basically what I found is the car has a ton of re a ton of really nice features and it's really well thought out. There's a a wireless charger in here, right? So if your phone, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay is working wirelessly, you pop your phone down in here and as you're about to get out the car, hit the hazards. As you're about to get out the car, if it realizes that you've hit the stop button, you open the door and your phone is still on the wireless charger, it'll show a notification on the screen saying, hey, don't forget, your phone's still on the charger. You don't wanna forget that. Tiny little feature, really well thought out. Haven't seen that in other cars. Like that's the level we're talking about here with Mercedes software. They have a ton of stuff built in, but try navigating somewhere. <laughs> try changing three settings. Like if you're in Android Auto and you want to change one car setting, you have to hit home, then you have to hit home again, then you have to hit settings. Now you're in the settings. I think it just needs a dock. I think it just needs a dock at the bottom for quickly accessible things. But you know, all that is nitpicking. All that is small potatoes. What I really don't think is nitpicking though is my uh, disagreement with the braking of this car. I asked Mercedes about this and it's intentional. So everything I'm about to tell you is not a bug or a problem. It's the way they've designed it. So this, uh, the steering wheel has a set of paddle shifters, as you can see here, a minus and a plus. You might wonder what that does in an EV. If I put it into drive, you can see it just changes the regen mode, right? So intelligent, no regen, intelligent. And then if I go on the uh, negative side here, we have normal and strong. Now, You'd think, okay, what is the difference here? You have no regen, which just coasts like a regular car. You lift off the accelerator and it coasts, and that's totally what it should do with no regen. When I turn on normal or strong regen or intelligent regen, that's when things get a little crazy because this brake pedal moves while I'm driving. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. So when I'm driving, I'll lift my foot off the accelerator and it will start to regen. And as it does, the brake pedal starts to depress away from me. So if I want to move my foot over to the brake pedal, I gotta find it. It's in a different place than it was where I was expecting it. And then the intelligent uh, regen is the most crazy of them all because it's trying to look around you with the cameras and regen more if you're approaching a car in front of you or regen less if you're on a highway or no regen at all sometimes. But the brake pedal's still moving the entire time. I can't get over the brake pedal moving. I still can move over to the brake pedal, find it, and then hit the brakes to add friction brakes, but I just don't feel like, uh, I don't wanna have to calibrate to the car to be able to smoothly slow down to a stop to the car in front of me. I'm slowing down like with three different levels of brake pressure to finally stop at zero because the thing is changing in front of me. The brake, sometimes the brake pedal pushes back at me. I don't like it, I don't like it. So I think what this comes down to for me is this is a car that is, again, focused on luxury over anything else. And that's its best asset. It's so comfortable. It's so quiet. And it's actually pretty solid in a straight line. I mean, if you floor this thing, the 580's got the horsepower to get up and go. I think it's about a four second zero to 60, but it keeps pulling. It's really impressive. Uh, but that's in a straight line and that's power, but that's not sportiness. I, I don't want to confuse having a lot of horsepower with a sporty drive. I'd be very curious if, you know, they end up making a smaller EV sedan or if they end up making a, a more sporty type thing, but this is a Mercedes thing. They do what they do well, and uh, it just happens to not be for me, that's all. So who is this for? This is for someone who's really going to appreciate all of the, the finer things and the little features. 
like the there's so many little things that they do like the mercedes will do a little light show for you every time you turn on the car and it plays a sound outside the car and it's super quiet and the suspension is very soft and just barely on the edge of floaty like it's really isolating and comfortable and has a ton of features inside and it's able to safely and comfortably transport people if you want a third row it'll do that and if you've got mercedes money then there you have it that's who it's for and it's going to be really good at that stuff either way let me know what you think of the eqs series I, uh, I might try to get the sedan back and see if there's a big difference between the two, but there's more coming. There's AMG stuff. This isn't AMG. This, there's a ton more electric stuff on the way, and we'll experiment and see who that's for. Until the next one, thanks for watching. From the egg. See you later. Peace.